her biography of Queen Camilla, Angela Levin has claimed that the former Duchess of Cornwall got off to a tough start with her future in-laws. King Charles III and the Queen Consort faced opposition from the public, the press, and the palace when their intentions to marry first came to light. According to Ms. Levin, both Princess Anne and Prince Andrew were against their brother marrying his former mistress, but the two siblings had slightly different reasons for their opposition. According to the author, who appeared on an episode of Royally Us last week, Anne and Andrew were opposed to the union because Camilla had been married before and she wasn't from the right sort of family. However, she went on to claim that Andrew has a very different reason than to Princess Anne, he hoped that he could persuade his mother to throw Prince Charles out because he wasn't going to let Camilla go. Therefore, Prince William could be the future king but he would be too young, so Andrew could take over and run it until William grew up. That was self-interest. Whereas Anne, known to be particularly driven, was doubtful of Camilla's work ethic and unsure if she would be able to step up to the plate. Camilla behind Kate and William split after deeming her not worthy, claims the Queen Consort allegedly pushed her husband into intervening in his son's relationship with Kate Middleton. In 2007, Kate, Princess of Wales and Prince William's relatively low-key romance was thrust into the spotlight following their high-profile split. What role did the Queen Consort allegedly play? Find out here. She had also gone out with Camilla's first husband, Ms. Levine added. They both crossed over at Andrew Parker Bowles. And so some of the reasons were the same, and some of their reasons were very different. In her book, Camilla, From Outcast to Queen Consort, Ms. Levin delved deeper into the relationship between the royals. She wrote, like many people who didn't know Anne well, Camilla found her frosty demeanor difficult and somewhat unnerving to cope with, at first and was, for many years, opposed to the idea of Camilla being granted the title of Queen Consort, a decision only settled in February last year. The Princess Royal once claimed Camilla will never be a true queen, according to Ms. Levin, who mapped out the Queen Consort's difficult road from the most hated woman in Britain to a respected member of the royal family. She claimed Anne kept away from Camilla as much as possible for years, saying the princess reportedly initially gave Camilla the cold shoulder. She continued, it was little consolation that the princess royal had also had a frosty relationship with Diana, for whom she had no time before she married Charles, and with Sarah, Duchess of York. Her relationship with Camilla was particularly awkward as they had both been involved with Andrew Parker Bowles, a retired army officer who Anne was romantically involved with before he married Camilla. However, time has proven to be a healer and Anne has seen for herself how hard Camilla has worked for the monarchy and her sense of duty, Ms. Levin wrote. Gradually, she became more amenable. Camilla and Anne sat side by side at the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II, which Ms. Levin argued shows how far their relationship has come. She wrote, Camilla sat next to Anne at the funeral, and I am quite sure they could have asked for different places had they wanted to, they were there obviously supporting each other. The two women have several hobbies in common and share a love of horses and dogs. Ms. Levin said, they both care about the monarchy and they are of similar age, noting that their relationship had really changed for the better. But, by several accounts, the same cannot be said for Camilla's relationship with Andrew. 
Richard Kay, an old friend of Diana, Princess of Wales, and a royal journalist claimed the Queen Consort had not forgotten how the Duke of York treated her during the difficult years following Diana's tragic death, citing a source close to the former Duchess of Cornwall. They told him, Camilla has always felt Andrew could have done more. The Queen listens to Andrew and he could have helped his brother at a time when he had few allies within the family. In fact, I would go so far as to say he was deeply unhelpful when support would have meant a huge amount to her and the Prince. Looking back to when there was little public sympathy for Charles and Camilla, if not open hostility, it was a case of Andrew playing politics. Camilla hasn't forgotten. Ms. Levin's claims come off the back of Prince Harry's tell-all memoir, in which the Duke of Sussex alleged neither he nor his brother Prince William wanted their father to marry Camilla. He wrote, when the question came, Willie and I promised our father that we would welcome Camilla to the family. The only thing we asked for in return was that he didn't marry her. Despite the objections, Charles and Camilla went ahead with their wedding. The pair got married in April 2005 at Windsor Guildhall. At the time, it was decided Camilla would be styled Prince's consort upon Charles' accession, but last year, the late Queen declared it was her sincere wish for her daughter-in-law to be named Queen Consort. In May, Camilla will be crowned alongside her husband at the coronation. Melting